What's going on guys, Bankrob Games here, more Fallout 3, Fatality Wastelands and last episode when we left off we carried on making our way through the Point Lookout DLC and we completed a very very iconic part of the DLC so I recommend going back and watching that if you haven't seen it because it is very very cool. At the end of the last episode as well I did mention the fact that I thought I'd come across a bug by not being able to wear a helmet but it is just the games where pointing out to us that we have got this big scar on our head after the last mission that we did so don't worry about that we'll be able to fix that shortly. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to be carrying on with the story of the DLC for now, because we only actually have a couple of side quests left to do. Be at peace. So here is the cathedral. If you're looking for refined punga, you can pick it up here for Marguerite at the shack to make the moonshine. There is also some uh, yeast here that uh, we can pick up as well. You can talk to sort of anyone here pretty much, but they're not actually that much use. So instead, we're going to come over here and talk to Nadine. Looks like another newbie in the tribe, and still able to string together whole sentences. Ain't you the lucky one? And um, if you remember at the start of the DLC, there was a lady that we met on our way onto the boat uh, that's looking for this lady here, Nadine. You still remember your name? Math? How's your memory? When I came back, there were bits in my memory where all I could recall was a white light and a jumble of voices. Crazy, huh? But you're not drooling, so you're doing okay. The rest weren't so lucky when they got their heads cut open. You sure you're feeling okay in there? You might want to check your head for a scar. We all get them after going to that bog. You know, the last part of the ritual. After you pass out, they get a guy to bring you back, cut open your skull, and free your mind. As in, he rips out a bit of your brain. It's supposed to be the part that holds you back, but that doesn't always work out so good. Anyway, you look like a lively one, so welcome to the tribe. My name's Nadine. I don't know what's going on with this lady's mouth. It's quite funny. You're a lucky one. And it probably didn't do any permanent damage. Scar will heal up on its own and you'll be good as new. Of course, you'll still be missing a chunk of brain, but it looks like you didn't need that bit anyway. Now hold still and I'll see if I can help you look like your old self again. I did get rid of the Scar. Yeah, it's all a little fuzzy for me, but I've got a hunch. I'm going to go do some snooping, see what I can figure out. Meet me by the riverboat in a day or so, and maybe I'll have something for you. Look, it's not that I don't want to go home or anything. I mean, I love my ma, even if she does make me want to claw my eyes out sometimes. It's just, I came out here to find a fortune. To make my mark. To be able to bring something with me when I do come back. If you see my mom again, let her know I'll be coming back. Eventually, just not quite yet. So that is sort of the next step completed in this unmarked quest where we need to find the Dean. But we'll finish that towards the end of the DLC anyway. I guess you mean Jackson. He speaks the word of enlightenment at us, but he ain't fit to lead a song, much less this bunch of morons. I've been meaning to talk to him about this place, but he's off doing his meditation thing. Off at his magical thinking cave, I guess. We're not allowed to know where it is. He says we're not enlightened enough to understand. I swear that sort of stuff pisses me off so much. I thought joining would be all drugs and magic, but it's just the same crap as everywhere else. Guess that's why I trailed Jackson to his stupid mystery cave. I only been here a week or so. But I'm about ready to ditch this bunch of dummies. I already stole all the punga I could ever need. Hey, if you still want to know where Jackson's hiding, I can help you out. No reason for me to give a damn about this place, you know? His cave's under the cathedral, but it's hard to find. Use this key to get in through a wrecked ship down at the sea cliffs to the east. Yeah, enough, Gavin. Let's move. So the other... There is someone else here. My going to want to be talking to this Krawatoa guy. 
and he's going to have a very cool Thanks, item for us. And you Pardon as well. me while I commune with the higher plane. Pardon me while I commune then we need to with finish, the higher plane. Um, wait until he finishes communing with the higher plane. You are new and you are welcome. I am Croatoa. I am not so new. Ponga grows strong. I help Ponga grow stronger. Ponga understands me. I understand Ponga. That is all it needs to be. And then if we have the child at heart perk, we uh, can get this item from him. It feels good to work with dirt doesn't it some people call it work but they don't understand take my shovel it has seen much use and much dirt maybe it will help you but be careful not to cut yourself with it it can make you sick and that does give us the unique shovel uh, being the fertilizer shovel and if we compare it to the regular shovel you can see it actually does quite a bit more damage it doesn't have quite as much item condition but it also does um bonus critical has bonus critical chance you can see the critical chance is very very high there at 53 percent and it also has bonus critical damage being a bonus 40 damage again very very high and it also has a hp draining effect and also it will allow us to show off probably the most important mod we have being the shovel and friends mod slip away like a pebble by the same guy that did the thank you um at peace the chinese assault rifle 10 millimeter pistol and assault rifle retextures and uh, you can see the first size shovel has like loads of green paint down the handle. And uh, yeah, this is going to be the best weapon in the game. I'm joking, but it's still really, really cool. And let's just carry out a traditional vine. But for now, we're just going to be carrying on with the main quest. Not really anything else on the grounds. Some more refined punga. Frame rate's getting a bit choppy. I don't remember there being any um, other sort of notable loot in the uh, cathedral. We really don't know what's going on with frame rate. But we need to report back to the Calvert Mansion. There's a bed we can sleep in to pass the time. Let's do it in here anyway. Oh, can't wait in this location. You infiltrated those tribals yet? And you didn't go track him down and grill him for information. I'm not your daddy. Don't waste your time checking in. 
Go find him and figure out what he wants with this place, you moron. It's kind of funny how a few episodes ago I was uh, laughing at how when we're with our dad, he keeps calling us back to him to do the next stage of the quest, even though it's rather simple. Um, and he literally said, I'm not your daddy. It's kind of, kind of funny. So we're just going to head down towards the map marker, but we are going to head through this, uh, resting grounds area but we do have to be careful very careful um because there's a tendency for ghouls and uh glowing ghouls so, down here and feral ghoul reavers just want to double check something in the uh, we can still dig with the fertilizer shovel. Yeah, rather annoyingly, I did actually have to turn off a mod called Glowing Ghouls, which makes um, Glowing Ghouls and Ghoul Reavers emit light, similar to what uh, Lumen does for ambient light sources. There you are. Uh, because of all the Reavers in the area, it was causing my game to sort of the frame rate to tank. So I don't know if that was is what was actually that. causing the um, frame rate bug that I've mentioned a few times at point lookout. I don't know if it's just the fact that there is such a high chance for Felgal Reavers to spawn. And it's causing that mod to uh, sort of mess up and uh, tank the frame rate and causing the game to crash and, and the like. There are quite a few things for us to loot here. Not been too impressed with the loot so far. It's not the end of the world, we've got everything that we need. So all the way down there. If you look for this little lamppost, it will um, show you where you need to go. Should be a ramp down here now. As we make our way down, we will need to be careful. There's my luck.
can't actually remember there being any substantial loot nearby. Considering how dangerous this little area is. Shovel all dirty. Now, and if I remember correctly, this is quite a dangerous location. Again, quite a lot of my lurks about. And I'm spamming a lot, spamming a lot of grenades, but we've got quite a few on us. I'm not too worried about selling them. Might try out Pa's fishing aid a bit more. Got it sort of fully repaired and gotten used to the double wrap shotgun a bit more. If you are slightly lower level, I would recommend using either stealth boys or the Chinese stealth armor if you have it. Make your way through this area. Unless it's not as dangerous as I remember. Seeker of the higher planes, perhaps. What brings you here? What splendid news. At last, the Holy Land is empty of his disruptive aura, and the astral plane is open to us all. Oh, but the transcendent master will want to hear of this, and as the returning champion, it is your right and honor to tell him yourself. After all, it is he who makes all true decisions about the spiritual growth of our tribe, including the decision to cleanse the mansion. Would that I was so wise. No, true leadership of the tribe belongs to the higher mind of the Enlightened One. Although his mind has moved beyond the need for flesh, his consciousness still returns here to guide our people. I merely interpret his wishes. He manifests here high on a ledge in the great sea caves well. Perhaps if you were fortunate, 
He will choose to share his wisdom with you. Yes, commune with him while I see to my tribe. There is much to be done. It's quite funny, this is one of the things that Point Lookout is well remembered for, is how it goes really wacky, and uh, yeah, there's sort of like a lost in translation thing here. Uh, very, very funny, very like a really cheesy sci-fi horror B-movie. Um, yeah, but let's talk to the Transcendent Master. Yeah, we, this is also where the DLC sort of um, splits up a little bit and we have a choice um, of how we act now. There's only really two endings of the DLC, I guess there's a third one. Um, but yeah, it is really funny. Uh, obviously Desmond's quite an unpleasant character and this guy doesn't seem to be treating us too great either. So we'll have to uh, decide what we want to do moving forward. But for now, we'll just... Uh, Right, leveling up. So for our perks, we're going to be picking Flash of Rage, which again improves our weapon bashing damage, but mainly because it allows us to have a chance to stagger our opponents for longer than usual, which is very, very useful because then it means we can either reload or have a follow-up shot or anything like that. And also Stonewall to give us 5 damage threshold against melee weapons and unarmed attacks. And it also means we can't be knocked down in combat. Two very useful uh, perks to have there. Yeah, it's got multiple effects for one perk, so always good. The requirements are a little bit higher in that with the 6 strength and endurance. And that then leads us on to the next quest being Thought Control. I think for the time being, we're actually going to see if Marguerite is done brewing our um, moonshine. Well, if it ain't my. Brewing low and good thing, sweetie. Tonics brewed and bottled. Here's your pay and a cut of the batch. Enjoy it. So then it is a repeatable quest. Do have the option to make more batches of moonshine. Uh, 
It's mainly just uh, worth doing once because you can find moonshine all over the place and on the enemies in Point Lookout. Now looking at how long this episode has been. I think we're actually going to head towards the coastal grotto. This one's a little bit more difficult to remember how to get down to. I think it's a. Generally speaking, it's a case of uh, Bethesda free climbing. But seeing as the weather is weather is as lovely as lovely as it is, I think I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Looking at how long it's been. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode and been enjoying the series so far. If you have been enjoying the series, please like and subscribe for more, and then that way you won't miss out on anything. Also, any mods that I've mentioned throughout the video will be linked down in the description below, so you guys can try them out for yourself. Thanks again for watching, always appreciate having you guys here, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.